not only has Rishi Sunak had his own mini shuffle, or, well, <laughs> shall we say his Grant Shapps shuffle, uh, shuffling once again Grant Shapps into another ministerial position to which, from all intents and purposes, he has clearly no <laughs> idea about his actual capabilities being in that role. And it's, to be honest, quite worrying that he's been put in that defensive role. Because if you look at, shall we say, the positions Grant Shapps has held, he's gone from a variety of different briefs in his time in Cabinet from one to another. And this was purely achieved by the fact that, according to a lot of insiders, he is a big schmoozer. He can smooge, schmooze with the best of them. Um, and that is seems to be why he got that position. He just happened to, well, be whispering into the right ear at the right time. And now he is in the defense position. What his qualifications are for that, who knows? Meanwhile, of course, behind the scenes, this has supposedly massively upset Penny Morden, who was hoping for a promotion to that uh, role. And at least Penny Morden has actually served, although be it in the Royal Navy, it would give her some credible experience in that role. I could say, certainly more than Grant Shapps. But of course, you don't necessarily have to serve uh, to be in the defence position. Or, you know, you need to at least have some form of background. But <laughs> Grant Shapps' background, from what I can tell, has absolutely nothing to do with defence whatsoever. It just seemed to be almost a reshuffle out of pure desperation. Whether there will be more coming in the weeks, possibly, who knows, but I, I would suspect this might not be the last. Or maybe, as I have long said, Rishi Sunak is just so weak, he cannot even manage to summon the strength to reshuffle his own cabinet. But enough about uh, the Tory the, the Tory reshuffle. We're going to talk about Labour's uh, reshuffle that they've had as well. So before we get to talking about that, please do remember to click on the like, share and subscribe button. And of course, down below, there are links to my Patreon page and a one updation link called Buy Me Coffee, where you can well buy me coffee. And of course, there is the uh, YouTube thank you button and the Pony Club down below as well. So this reshuffle, this to me marks what Starmer has been saying all along. He has been saying right from day one, he has to deliver. You know, it's the three Ds, deliver, deliver, deliver. And he's right. Starmer is absolutely right. When his Labour government comes in, and bear in mind, this would be applicable to any government, even if Corbyn was in charge, this would apply to him as well. Anyone who takes over the next government has to, from day one, start delivering immediately. There is no time for on-the-job learning. There is no time for giving people a six-month holiday period to, to you know, get them into the role, to get them to understand. Starmer has to deliver, and not only just Starmer, but Labour has to deliver from day one. That is something we have to get across to a lot of people. Uh, the Owens Jones types, who have dubbed this, uh, as you can see from the title, the March of the Blairites. But here's the thing you already had in the top team already Ed Miliband, Event, uh, Event Cooper, Event Cooper, and of course, Hillary Benn. So they're already on there. And to be honest, Ed Miliband, I've, I've said before, Ed Miliband is really, really good and has become, I think, a lot more confident and a lot more bolder uh, in recent years. And he's we've, we've talked about some of the stuff that he said about, you know, expanding and protecting and promoting workers' rights. Um, Yvette Cooper has done a fantastic job taking the government to task over their failings of the... Uh, over the, over the home office situation. So they've done a really good job, and they will certainly perform immediately upon getting into office. And that's partly why this has been done. 
to prepare Labour to be in power. This is the most obvious sign of this. Um, so, of course, the other people who have been brought in, uh, Peter, uh, Peter Kale and, of course, Liz Kendall, and they were special advisors under Blair. So everyone who has been brought in, who has been shuffled in, have previously worked for the the last Labour government or have, you know, experience in cabinet because they have to perform from day one. Now, Angela Rayner getting the um, the shadow levelling up uh, brief, I still think that's pretty good. Angela Rayner, I've said this multiple times before, is criminally, criminally underused by Labour. And she definitely does seem to me the natural next step uh, after Starmer, unless Ed Miliband wants another crack at the uh, crack at the whip, he might so choose to do. We'll have to see. But it's not the end of the world. There's a lot of talk, of course, about her um, wanting to be confirmed as his deputy when he does get into number ten, and we'll see what happens. But I just want to go over this. Um, because this was the um, one of these quotes that has been said. So this comes from someone who was a shadow minister, and this, this is what they had to say. It's an entirely a factional takeover. It's all the Blairites, and they'll be chomping at the bit to prove themselves. I don't suppose much will change day to day, but it's definitely a shoring up of the right. While other senior aides have had this to say, that shows a march of experience, doesn't it? We've got to get the balance right between winning the next election and actually running the country. It's about getting round pegs in round holes. And he's absolutely right, as I said at the beginning. Starmer has to deliver. There is a difference between being in opposition and you know, campaigning to be uh, the next government and then actually running the country. And Starmer has to show from day one that Labour are a far, far more competent government, and that the country is in far safer hands than it is under the Tories. Because if not, they will jump on that. But another cabinet minister said, if you look around the table, uh, there are a lot of people who were in government or who were advisors last time. It's not necessarily about them being Blairites, it's they have served. And experience counts for a lot at this stage. And of course, a lot of this has been uh, Sue Gray. Sue Gray just started working for uh, Keir Starmer this weekend, indeed. So a lot of this uh, reshuffle has been down <coughs> and has been handled by, um, by Sue Gray. And it does seem that she is very keen to get to work very quickly. So we can see that there will certainly be a lot of this. Um, but this is also one. Another another Labour aide has also commented on this, saying uh, that they acknowledged everyone is not happy with how the reshuffle has turned out, but there have been few public grumblings, saying that they know it is all about winning the election now, one said. We've got the experience, we've got the discipline, and we know there's still more to do. This team now has to deliver. And that's the key point. That's the key takeaway. Starmer has now set up his cabinet. They might be all Blairites, but that's not the end of the world. That is far, far, far from the end of the world. And Starmer needs a cabinet that can go in and start work from day one to sort out whatever kind of mess he is going to inherit. Um, and I know, of course, it's made a lot of people unhappy. Like I say, Owen Jones is crying about the fact that, oh no, all the Blairites are in charge. But you need a government. You need to go into government, honestly, at this point, with a team who, who's got the experience, who's got the know-how, and can deliver. And as soon as Starmer gets into number 10, it will all be about delivery. If he can't do that, well, who knows? Who knows what will happen? But 
yeah. Interesting time. March of the Blairites, not so much. I would definitely say it's more along the lines of Starmer's lining all his ducks up in a row uh, to get the most experienced, capable people he can in his cabinet from day one to, as he, as he said once himself before, the three Ds, deliver, deliver, deliver. Because if you can't do that, then what was the point of winning in the first place? So, as always, thank you very much for watching. And, of course, as always, let me know what you think down below. And, of course, we'll see you all next time.